here you have the mother of all handheld scopes that you see today. The Hitachi VC5410. It's a not particularly handheld but at least portable oscilloscope built in the 90s I guess. And let's have a look at this cute little baby. So you can unfold it like a modern computer and yeah just have a look at this ridiculously small screen i mean they had all this area here available and they put in what four inches four and a half inches of lcd but as they claim on the outside it's a color lcd welcome to the 21st century so yeah 20 megahertz analog bandwidth but um, it only uses a sample rate of 15 mega samples per second so you only gonna get this bent with an average mode in single shot capture yeah you can expect like what one megahertz of bandwidth but well back in the day I guess this was quite a lot and these units were quite expensive at least what I've seen in the internet it's a little bit difficult to get some history on this so Let's turn it on. Okay, I convinced it to boot up and actually it's quite fast. If you power it up the first time when the battery was completely flat, it takes some time for this uh, self-test and calibration routine. But um, if the battery is good, it will only take this, what, three or four seconds to boot up and that's actually faster than most modern digital storage oscilloscopes go but yeah this thing is quite limited um, in memory and processing power so what would you expect for a boot app if there's nothing to boot so let's give it a little time to do that Well, I guess while it's uh, calibrating, we can have a short look at the um, keyboard. It's actually quite a nice layout. I like how they color coded the uh, different channels and then they have um, rotary encoders for both channels. Uh, since many modern scopes share one interface for all channels. Um, it's a little bit annoying that they don't have rotaries for the volts per division. You have to use these keys, but as you can see by the slots, um, of course, wherever they put a knob, they had to make a cutout in the um, top case. Otherwise, they would have to use something with a lower profile, but that's how they chose to do it back in the day. So it has finished all self-tests and obviously it has passed self-test, woohoo! So I just hooked up channel 1 to the internal compensation source, it's a 1 kilohertz uh, square wave, 5 volts peak to peak. And actually also this all scope does have the evil auto scale button, so let's see what it can do. Some relays to click click click. And it actually did something useful, so don't mind that at all. Uh, it's currently running in dot mode. It also can display vector mode, but um, I prefer using dot mode on this old scope since um, this is more like analog running it this way. So you can change your volts per division with these buttons. Uh, you can, of course, Move your trace up and down. I would have preferred if they had a rotary encoder for the um, vertical too, but um, since the limited space, they had to do cutouts for all the rotary encoders, so um, that's why they limited their use. What I kind of like, you can um, push all these also for the trigger level. Uh, just push on these and they will be uh, reset to the default position so 50% trigger level and these are zero volts and um, 
it actually it does has all settings that you expect from a standard oscilloscope and in addition you get um, cursors like on a you're used to on a more modern digital oscilloscope um, can have verticals can have, can have your horizontals and they're a little bit dodgy to use since it's reacting very very slowly but yeah as I said before better than nothing I guess and you can have a uh, whole set of uh, readings so rise time and uh, frequency and so on what else can we get and um, yeah you can guess how slow this thing is just by pressing menu and see how slow it builds up the display on the screen and of course it's uh, not only a digital oscilloscope it's a digital storage oscilloscope so um, of course you have your single shot capture button um, and you can save and recall your waveform so let's save this to say number okay it's automatically saved it to zero you can these buttons are numbered you can choose any of this as location for storage so you have um, eight nine can store nine waveforms in there which well is plenty if you just need it for comparison or whatever and can recall that and it will recall from memory so you see uh, let me move channel one out of the way that the stored waveform is displayed in white and channel one is uh, this greenish and channel two of course is this uh, yellow as marked on here i really like the layout of this it's quite convenient to use um, and actually i use this unit a lot uh, when doing uh, automotive di diagnostics since most cases you don't really need a fast scope or something you just need something to look at the waveform if you're looking for like um, modern ac compressors with this um, adjustment valve these, which is controlled with a PWM signal or stuff like this. I use it a lot for this since the internal battery is uh, completely dead but it takes a 12 volt power supply so how convenient is that for using it in a car. So I guess there's not much to say about this maybe I will do a future video um, comparing its performance to a more modern low-end DSO but ah, there's no point in that I guess you already realized that this thing is incredibly slow incredibly low power but if you needed a portable scope in the 90s you would be lucky to have this I guess I mean it's at least a color LCD right Okay, so I have removed all screws that hold that thing together, so I think we can just lift it up. Oh, I guess we have to unplug some of these, or maybe we have to unplug all. Okay, I think I got them all, and that's inside. It would have been a heck more serviceable if they would have put this ground wire also on the other side so you could just unfold the whole unit without taking out all the wiring. So it's a, at least three board construction so you um, of course you have your uh, battery pack here which I was already um, repaired and patched a little bit. I, um, took two cells out which were leaking and put some other I think also dead cells in this battery is lasting for like 20 seconds but better than nothing and uh, well I also 
already botched in another um, super cap since the one which was in here was faulty and that's what holding the um, calibration data so yeah calibration on this thing is fucked up anyway but um, if this is completely dead then you will have to wait this like two minutes when it's booting up every time okay so all the screws are out so we are ready to reveal what's on the totally exciting analog board so this is actually quite serviceable you can just unfold that and if you want really want to you could uh, also put the connectors for the keyboard back in here and have the whole thing uh, open on the desk uh, for troubleshooting but actually uh, I think there's no proper service manual for this online so you will have quite a hard time reverse engineering that but so let's have a look at the analog board unfortunately um, most things are underneath this um, metal shielding and it's all so soldered onto the circuit board so I will not rip off that there's this nice big insulation sheet on top to prevent any shorts. They've done that quite nicely. It's all quite uh, nicely built. I have nothing to uh, complain about here. So here you see the crystal oscillator running at 30 megahertz, which is uh, giving the uh, sample rate since um, I guess it's running something like a dual slope uh, analog to digital converter so split that in half and you've got your 15 mega samples per second so yeah nothing terribly exciting here to see since all the analog stops underneath these shieldings but um, you know 20 megahertz analog bandwidth isn't that exciting especially for um, uh, 96 vintage device it was uh, actually pretty poor bandwidth and pretty standard front end on there uh, one thing I wonder about and what I might try out someday is um, taking out this crystal oscillator and uh, feeding in an uh, external signal or just replacing this with like 50 megahertz or I don't know if we should risk a hundred maybe I will look up some data sheets for the uh, components and um, I don't know if this uh, if they also calculate the uh, time base from this uh, oscillator or if they if they probably will do so putting a, another oscillator in there would probably mess up all your uh, time basis but if you m would be able to fix that in calibration you might be able to do a quite cheap upgrade on this I'm not so sure if uh, the analog to digital converters can handle this but I pr probably will give that a shot in the future just going like for 50 or maybe 400 megahertz I guess that's I think 50 is uh, the most we can expect from this quite convenient would be like putting times 10 in there would be uh, easier to calculate but 300 megahertz seriously it will not handle that but yeah that was a quick peek inside the Hitachi VC 5410 digital oscilloscope and uh, I hope you enjoy it and uh, see you next time bye